This is day two of the rewire. Um, yesterday was only really a half day because uh, they obviously had to come up from London uh, to Scotland and so, but they've already really kind of made some inroads uh, in unplugging. And the great thing with a company like uh, Yellow Technology is they don't just plug in, they unplug, which is, considering my efforts, how I wired in originally is very much a bonus. But I believe the first thing that's happening today is they need to clear around the sides of the wall because we have a carpenter coming in to do some uh, trunking. So my big conundrum basically is I have two of these uh, black magic SSD docks. And what you do is you, you just stick your, your things, they're kind of hot swappable. Great, fantastic. I have two of those and um, on my portable rig, I've been using a T3 uh, Samsung, uh, which is a two terabyte drive. But on my main rig, I have um, this uh, little collection of drives. Each of these are two terabytes. And not that you need these to be a media composer, but if you're running a software kind of sampling company, uh, you're dealing with a lot of raw data. So uh, I basically usually have about five of these up and running, there's six here. So the conundrum for me is how to get these to work with a laptop, and I think I have a solution. Plan is uh, enclosures, and uh, basically, they're cheap. <laughs> they're cheap, and they feel cheap. So basically, you've got this little enclosure thing, and what happens is your SSD just plugs in, this is actually the first time I've done it, just plugs in there, they really are terribly made, these. Okay, so there you go, it got it enclosed, protected against the environment, and you've got a little pecky uh, USB-C cable connected to your laptop. So I've got two of those. So basically I have a raided uh, uh, sample drive, my Spitfire commercial sample uh, drive, so I use those. And then basically what I've also bought is some, just some cables, so I can basically carry these around with me in kind of stored safely. And then if I need to kind of grab and grab something to nick that's on another drive, I can just quickly plug these in, transfer it to one of my raided drives, um, and off I go. That's the plan, anyway. Whilst they're setting up over there, or wiring in, it's gonna take two and a half weeks, so I needed to set up a temporary setup here. No real surprises here. Massive fan of the quartet by Apogee. Um, I have such a long-lasting uh, love affair with the Dynar Audios. Whether it be a BM5A or a 15A or an M2, um, I can walk into any room and know how the room is responding and how to adjust my uh, mixes accordingly. So when I've run these in here, they're incredibly bass heavy. So I have to make sure that I'm really generous with the bass and stuff. Uh, I've got my palette gear here. But the real star of the show is not actually this Nord piano. Whilst it feels really nice, and it's got all of these buttons and knobs and sliders, actually no sliders, just knobs, you cannot assign any of them, uh, not even to modulation or expression. So there's not a single knob in there that is modulation or expression, which is a bit of a pain in the arse. The real secret star of the show is this uh, new LG monitor, which has been made, I think, specifically to Apple's specifications. Um, they're available in the Apple stores. Um, it's a lovely looking monitor, uh, that goes without saying, considering the price, but what's really amazing is, round here is this awesome uh, USB-C hub. So basically, all you have to do, and this is what I would recommend for anyone wanting to set up a laptop-based uh, studio, is to get one of these monitors, because all you have to do is plug this in. Everything powers up, including the laptop. So literally, this is on charge, uh, it's got power, and you know you can dangle uh, drives off the back and uh, I've got the interface running, the pallet gear, everything. And I am a new convert to the uh, wireless mouse and keyboards. Uh, this is yet to require power and I did an entire series, a three-part series, which was quite work intensive uh, on a single charge. So I am a convert. So that's my temporary rig uh, for the next two or three weeks. So it's gonna run all the way around. There's gonna be two mouse holes at the front 
so that things will go in and out to the various racks on your workstation. Awesome. Little hole for your connector panel over there. And then holes on the ends for your surround panel. There. And look at all this organisation. <gasps> look at it. <laughs> That's the one. Do you want to see the back? Yes, please. Each one of your racks has two of these multi-pin connectors associated with it. This will just flap down, and you'll be able to Look at that. you'll be able to edit your Jackfield like that. Whose handiwork is that? How long has it taken you? Um, quite a while. It was fairly complicated, but I do If you have a look at this here, it correlates to the cables and. The EDAC panel. Is it what's called normalised? Is that? Yeah. Yes, yes. the jack fields are. So, what, what, what does normalised mean? So, what you're going to have is uh, so you've got your output signals a lot of the time on a top row. Yeah. And then underneath them, you've got inputs to other pieces of equipment. Right. So, for example, here, this blue block here will be all your synths, which okay. will all be in a bank over there. And under here is where uh, they go. Is, is where they're going. Uh, so, to have them, in this case, they'll be half normaled. So basically, this hole here is joined behind here to that hole there. Yeah. And you went, so it's, it's the equivalent of plugging in a cable there and putting it there. So okay. automatically, they'll route down into the inputs down there. When they're half normaled, you can plug in a cable to the synth one there and feed it somewhere else, and that will still continue going uh. down there. So it'll only break the connection when you plug into the bottom row. Gotcha. So there's, there's they're the kind of kind of two main types. If you have it fully normal, then if you plug in anywhere, it'll break the it'll connection. It'll break the connection. Gotcha. So you generally have that with mics where you don't want to split the signal down. Mm. But a line level stuff, obviously, it, it's fine to duplicate gotcha. it in that way. I don't want to waste too much of your time, but why have patch bays? What's it for? You're not plugging into the backs of all your equipment all the time. Um, yeah. Those connections aren't a aren't really built to be completely patched. You know, all the twenty four seven. Yeah. They're built to kind of have connectors in and stay there, and right. uh, and so you know you can have very neat and very permanent rack yeah. wiring, yeah. Um, uh, where you can have your racks pushed up against something, or you can have them in a tight space, or you can you, know, you don't have to look at mess, yeah. and then you can have them all going to one place where you can route everything to anything in the studio all in one place. And these are new as well, and these are the mm, they're upside down. Man. <laughs> 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 so now they're converting your. Synth signals uh, to balance lines to run around the room. Ah. So we've got a strong signal by the time we get around the other exactly. side. Exactly. So that's your print oh. There they are. <laughs> Quality outfit, yellow technology. <laughs>